Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. In this video, I will show you how to edit or create a custom holddown. Holddowns are an essential part of a ShareWalls project when designing walls or openings. The program currently includes holddowns from Simpson Strong Tie. However, you may want to change holddown properties or specify holddowns from different manufacturers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to modify an existing holddown and show you how to add a new holddown model into the ShareWalls program for future use. First, you will need to go to the holddown database, which is accessible by pressing the Edit Database button located at the bottom of the Walls and ShareLines window or the Opening window. To override the properties of an existing holddown, you can select a particular holddown device that you would like to modify from the drop-down list and its properties will be displayed. The vertical bolt section is where you can select whether the holddown has an anchor bolt or not. If there is an anchor bolt, you can change its diameter and its maximum length for displacement. If you are not familiar with the always use displacement at maximum capacity checkbox, check out the hold down settings video. If a shrinkage compensator is used in a hold down device, make sure to enable this checkbox. A shrinkage compensator is a mechanical device used to adjust for the change in wood member depth due to shrinkage and wood crushing. When a shrinkage compensator is used in hold downs, the wood shrinkage and crushing does not contribute to the total vertical displacement of the hold down. For detailed explanation on wood shrinkage and crushing, refer to the hold down settings video. If we look at the design results, as mentioned, the shrinkage and wood crushing components will not be included in the hold down displacement. The displacement will then come from the hold down elongation and fastener slippage only. You could watch the hold down settings video for detailed explanation on hold down displacement due to elongation and slippage. Finally, the next section is where you can adjust the load carrying capacities and the displacement of the hold downs. This section includes the thickness of studs, its depth, the capacity when using Douglas fir end studs, and the capacity when using SPF end studs. As you can see, the hold down capacity specified here will be displayed in the hold down design table after performing a shear wall design. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it is also possible to start from scratch and create a custom hold down. Let me show you how to add a MyTech holddown into the holddown database. For example, let's add the UPHD9 holddown from the MyTech catalog. First, I will click New and enter the holddown name. If this holddown device will be used as the default holddown for future Shearwall projects, check the default holddown checkbox. The next step is to specify the anchor bolt. As you can see from the hold down specifications from MyTech, this type of hold down requires an anchor bolt with a diameter of 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters. I will also set the maximum length for giving displacement as 152.4 millimeters. Since this device does not include a shrinkage compensator, I will not enable the shrinkage compensating device checkbox. The last step is to specify the hold down uplift capacity and the corresponding displacement at the maximum capacity. As you can see, the thickness of the studs must be a minimum of 3 inch or 76 millimeters with a minimum width of 5.5 inch or 140 millimeters. The hold down uplift capacity is 73.84 kN when used with Douglas fir end studs while the capacity for SPF end studs is 73.44 kN. As for the hold down displacement, it is 2.06 mm when loaded at maximum capacity. You might notice a minor difference in end stud sizes between the MyTech catalog and the Shearwalls program. Specifically, the MyTech catalog requires end studs to be a minimum of 76 by 140 mm while we only have specified a single stud size of 76 by 140 mm and have not covered any larger sizes as mentioned by MyTech. In fact, there is no need to specify any larger sizes in shear walls because the program automatically applies the same hold down capacity when a larger stud size is specified in the walls input window. To summarize, 
The capacity and displacement specified for a given stud size is applicable to any larger stud sizes. Shear walls will display a warning if smaller than specified stud sizes are used. If the hold-on capacity is applicable to all stud sizes, simply input the thickness and width field as all. When this is done, the program will apply the same hold-on capacity for all stud sizes. Once finished, we can click the exit button and our newly created hold-on will be saved in the database and can be used in future projects. Now you can see that the new hold-on has been added to the hold-on list.